What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, the Mandalorian. We haven't spoken about it. There's always there's always just a lot to talk about. Um, but there have been some special episodes with the Mandalorian, Brian, that I've texted you and like, yo, this is dope. Uh, there were there was an episode or two that weren't that like you know they weren't horrible but compared to some of the other episodes they weren't on that level. Whereas with Andor it was like each episode was just getting better and better. It, Andor just kept doing things that you wouldn't think it can be done this day and age in terms of excellence after excellence and better 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 better. And Mandalorian has had its moments of providing those with some spectacular. Uh, episodes, Brian, especially that last one, Brian. What are your thoughts so far on the Mandalorian, and why do you think? I mean, we've had this conversation about Star Wars and people not really tuning in because perhaps it's lost its magic. Maybe that Jedi stuff is not um, is not uh, in the stories as much as perhaps some may want, but they're certainly hinting at it, Brian. What are your thoughts on the Mandalorian? And what you've seen so far? It's been an up and down season. I think it's definitely, you hear more fan unrest about this show. However, when they announced that Filoni was going to direct a culmination film that would tie together the threads from Mandalorian seasons, Book of Boba Fett, Ashoka, it something kind of clicked for me. I was like, okay, I think I see what's really good. I think I see what he's trying to do across these shows that didn't really make as much sense in the moment, which is, I think you have to consider these shows as one big show, not independent entities or seasons. And in fact, the clue might be that they called the Boba Fett show, the book of Boba Fett, which sort of implies it's like part of a greater series of volumes. Because I remember watching that show at the time, we kind of were like, hey, we're mixed on it. And then all of a sudden it became a Mandalorian show for a couple of episodes and we're like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. And then you realize like, when you watch this season of Mandalorian, you have to have seen those episodes for this season to make any sense. Correct. And then you're like, well, okay, what if I swapped? What if I took those episodes from Book of Boba Fett? What if I put those in this Mandalorian season and I threw out some of the side episodes? Would you feel better about the season? Yes, you probably would, but then you wouldn't have as much connectivity to the Boba show, which I think he really was intent on making sure there's linkage. And I think the same thing is going to happen in Ashoka. I think you're going to watch the Ashoka show and it's going to be like 80% Ashoka show. And then there's going to be this random interlude where you're like, what, what's going on? Like, why are we back over here? But his whole thing is like, if you view this as a giant collective that I am going to pull together on the big screen, I think this starts to make a lot more sense. It's kind of like, Meanwhile, over here, let's spend some time with Bo-Katan. Meanwhile, over here, let's spend some no. time uh, with, with Thrawn. And I think that made me sort of, I think, like or at least understand what was going on a bit more. Yeah. Now, to your point, in episodes five and seven of The Mandalorian, I think we got what the trailer was kind of promising, which was a more martial, grander scale, you know, epic uh, yeah. battle with, with real stakes. And... And with different styles, like episode five to me, I just loved it because it was like a running, not space fight. It was like a running, you know, dog fight basically, which was super cool. Yeah. And then episode seven was like full on, just like we're, we're, we're just pulling out, you know, twists and turns and like heavyweight, heavyweight effects. And yeah. it looks great. It feels great. And I'm like, to your point, this would look great on IMAX. I'm yes. like, I, I just give it to me in IMAX. I, you know, they're actually going to show the Picard season finale in IMAX. Oh, and wow. I was like, why, why, why doesn't Disney do the same with, Word. with some of these types of stuff? Word, yo, because it's visually, they're, they're just as fantastic, man. They're just fantastic. But I got to say, Brian, I was watching um, Giancarlo Esposito. <laughs> and I'm like, as I was watching, I watched that scene a few times. I have to get watch, and like you just like this dude is just he just yeah he's the same character but he's just so good man 
he's just so good at his expressions at his his cadence his melody in terms of how he speaks and addresses and looks at people and i'm like i wouldn't mind see, I, I know he's trying to get professor x i wouldn't mind seeing him i would want to see someone else but he's just that good and his performance <laughs> as Moff gideon is just like one of those like this dude doesn't doesn't miss well, this show uses him like Mariano Rivera, right? They, he comes in in like the second to last episode of the last episode, right? And he, and he always kills. I, I think what I liked about this episode, though, was they've been teasing his return throughout mm -hmm. the season. So mm -hmm. you knew he was coming back. But what I was excited about was I felt like his return, they paid off some of the, 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 the clues they've been dropping since season one. Okay. So spoiler alert if you haven't seen it but like it finally kind of made sense to me why he was obsessed with baby yoda why he was obsessed with the dark star. i'm like oh and he says it he's like i'm taking the best of all of these religions and technologies and peoples and i'm like oh so you, we know that you're not gonna be all that but you are trying to be Star Wars version of a super soldier. You are trying to pull together. You want to yeah. become force sensitive. Yeah. You want to have, you know, Beskar armor and you want to have cloning technology. Like you want to have all of that mashed together as you, the leader. And I'm like, that's actually kind of cool because we know he doesn't wind up becoming the emperor. We know yeah. he's ultimately defeated and stopped. Uh -huh. But the idea that there's this guy, this rogue guy who's on the Imperial side, who is, yeah, he's serving the bad guys, but he's got his Don't. own master plan. I like that. Yeah, yeah. When he yeah, showed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes for a very interesting uh situation when Grand Admiral Thrawn appears. So it's oh, which be... I by the way, that is like off the charts. I can't wait. I love that they brought Lars Mickelson back to do the live action version. I my expectations for Thrawn are off the, the charts. charts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um so what else do you want to talk about, Brian, regarding the Mandalorian season and the, the movie that he's building towards? Because what we believe and most what everybody believes is going to be the heir to the throne. Is it going to be a, that storyline? And a, will it be that movie? What? How do you see this going? Well, so there's a lot of ways he can go. The rumor is Mandalorian itself has one more season. The rumor is it's four seasons and done. Okay. And that will lead in. I'm guessing that would probably be the last thing you see before you go into the film will be whatever cliffhanger is in the season four finale. Yeah. Thrawn, I'm, I am guessing Thrawn appears in some form in this season's finale. I don't know if we see him physically, maybe as a hologram. Maybe you hear his voice and you know it's his, but... I'm guessing he is a presence of some kind in this finale, but then you have to see him physically in the Ashoka series yes. because of the, the linkage between those two characters. But yes, this is, the, you heard the phrase in the Ashoka trailer, heir to the empire, which is a nod to the Timothy Zahn novels that created Grand Admiral Thawne. Now those novels had, you know, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo. The, the, the OGs are, were in that. You obviously, I mean, I shouldn't say you can't use Carrie Fisher. You obviously could recreate her, but um it does offer the avenue of, and we've already had so we've already had luke appear in this show and i remember when i heard her say the phrase I, and i heard about this thing being pulled together i said are they setting up more of heir to the empire than we think well are they actually gonna use that as a way to bring in like luke at the peak of his power still in his prime one more time as part of the film, but not as a, as a main character, more as a supporting character. It's there for them if they want it. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm always reluctant to do too much Skywalker stuff, but like, if they're true to these novels, the novels relied on those three to once again kind of save the day. So, I don't know, I'm, I'll, it's, I, I definitely think you're right. The film is definitely gonna be a nod to Heir of the Empire in some form, and it's gonna be the capper, I think, on Thrawn's presence in this Star Wars universe, but, um, I mean, he's going to have at least, I mean, Ashoka has eight episodes. Mando's going to have at least another eight. I'm sure there's at least one more. I don't know if they'll do another Boba Fett season, but there'll be something else, I would think. So let's call it 24 episodes of TV they have to work with before they get to the movie. So that's still a lot of, lot of time to, mm. to build this out. But Yeah, man. 
but yeah. they dropped so many easter eggs in this episode that led to the other trilogy right so you saw hux's dad yes which was kind of like oh like that was yeah. like a little bit of a linkage there project necromancer which obviously is a reference to bringing palpatine back mm -hmm. it's probably linked to the snoke project yes um that's clearly that you had this guy um Pelian, who's from actually, he's from Dave Filoni's animated shows. That mm -hmm. was Xander Berkeley, who's like, and he's like one of that those guys. Mm -hmm. So like, he speaks has a lot of lines. Like, all right, so he's going to be a character. So like, they're definitely expanding that whole world. And I'm assuming all these guys have a part to play, other than being in one secret meeting. That's dope because all of them have their own sectors and stuff like that. So who knows, yep. Brian? Who knows what they can do with it? My only thing, Brian, I, you know me when I'm picking out little things from dope episodes and this, I was like, this kind of bothers me <laughs> a little bit, even though it shouldn't, but it's whatever. But like, they didn't know Moff Gideon never made it to that thing, yo. How long, how, how much time has <laughs> passed? <laughs> it's like, don't you usually get from here to there like that? It's like yeah, this show does do that <laughs> very literally. So it's yeah. like for me, it's like y'all don't know that he wasn't, he didn't get delivered. That that that's I don't know. This shouldn't have been so much time passed to discover that. Is what I'm saying. I think that's fair. I think that's certainly fair. I think the other thing that I'd be curious as to your thoughts on the show clearly realized that they are running out of tricks with Grogu in his current form. So they give him IG-12 mm -hmm. as a way to entertain us mm -hmm. in a different way. But here's my question for you. Mm -hmm. How long can... So Grogu's clearly going to, I'm assuming, going to be in this show through the end, probably will be in the movie. What's the point where he has to grow up enough to speak and actually be a more functional, dynamic character? Or can they keep him a cooing baby? all the way through like do they risk losing the charm of the character if they make him more of a character because it is it they were basically telling you we can't just have him stealing eggs eating frogs and making a few noises the way we did the first cut. we had to give him something else to do to be relevant i think these little things that they do with grogu uh keeps him entertaining i think if they overuse him we'll certainly get tired of you know Cause you, if when you watch the show, Brian, it's not all about him right now. Um, he's just there as a companion to uh, the Mandalorian, and he's there. We know he's force sensitive, um, but there isn't anything that he can. I, I, he has been put in a situation where he has to do anything other than separate two guys from fighting, right? Right. Um, but they're gonna save. I feel that they should save those moments for these. I guess let's call it leveling up. Um, and when he finally gets to speak, I think they should save that for a movie because I think still he is the future of the, of the of Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing too is I feel like the fact now that I feel like there's this greater interconnectedness across these shows makes me think that the fact that we've seen some of his Order 66 origins that has to have more of a payoff too. There has to be more to that. There's more hidden underneath yes. him not speaking than we have known. Why bother having a whole sequence with Ahmed Best on Coruscant if you weren't then going to build that into something else? And now that they're starting to pay off some of these little scenes from seasons one and two and from Book of Boba Fett, I'm feeling more confident that there is more to him. But it just it just remarked to me, to me that in this episode, they were like, oh, we have to give him a vehicle because he has to do something physically different than yeah than we had seen seen before so yeah i mean i haven't not i have not i mean people have been hating how much screen time katie sackoff is getting relative to um pedro pascal I, it hasn't really bothered me as much this season i think she's great and like yeah. he's still there doing his thing and i'm kind of and this episode this episode he got to really kind of do his thing and then he gets captured so now he's gonna be the unlike the last two seasons he's gonna be the one that they have to go rescue in, in, in the finale so I know the show is called Mandalorian, but you know he's not the only Mandalorian. It's, right. It's just much more than just him. He's just the main dude, sort of, and he's a part of a bigger story. And he's sort of, uh, I guess, what you call the, a, a major threat in all of this, right? But let us know in the conversation below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerdgen Report.